Okay, with the controversy going on with Iran and America, there was an incident that happened with uh, Boeing 737. And it was supposed to be a Ukrainian airplane. And then coincidentally, when Iran was sh shooting off the missiles that time, that hours later, that hours later, what happened was that when this Ukrainian plane was departing, that it crashed, actually. And then more than 100 lives were lost, actually. No survivors. Absolutely no survivors, actually. So there are some, uh, the government is claiming that there was no kind of conspiracy on Iran's part concerning that. But then there are some uh, conspiracy researchers who claim that there might be something more to it than that. Now, I don't know how much of that is true or not, but I am going to give you some interesting points because me, the type of person that I am is that I just don't believe what the news sources say, popular news sources say one, and neither do I just believe one side or the other just like that. The type of person that I am is I just lay out all the information. That's the kind of person that I am. I lay out all the information, and then what I do is that I filter them out and find what can be matched with Scripture that can be an interesting insight to think about. That's how I do it. A lot of people, when they look at the news, popular news source, they just believe it easily. A lot of people, once they look at the, some kind of conspiracy stuff online, they just believe it easily. You can't do that with information. If you do that, you're going to be totally unbalanced. So the final authority should always be scripture. When you always do scripture, then all the information out there, it can be filtered out after that. And you don't care about what the, uh, uh, which side is true or not. You just find out information that is relatable and that is, um, man, oh, I can't believe I just lost a vocabulary for, word for it. Uh, th that's relatable and that is resourceful, that is valuable, that, you, that is uh, insightful with the Bible. That's what you need. Okay, let's look at Revelation chapter 13. We notice that the Antichrist, that what he's going to do is that he's going to try to rule over all the world. You'll notice at verse uh, 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now notice that this is referring to what? The leopard, right? At verse 2, the beast was like unto a leopard. Now I've given you a uh, teaching about the seven-headed dragon and ten-horned antichrist. So I'm not going to really expound on this one. But if you watch that teaching, which was a lot of fun, by the way, if you watch that teaching, I mentioned to you that the leopard is representing the United States of America. So notice that the Antichrist said he will have a huge, uh, he will have a huge connection with the USA because the Bible mentions him feet of a bear, mouth of a lion, but his overall major part of the body was, in verse 2, like unto a leopard. You'll notice that. So he's largely going to be connected with America. Now, notice that just like JFK and just like Abraham Lincoln, that there's going to be an assassination. Now, uh, what you're going to notice right here is that concerning about these assassination attempts concerning with the previous presidents, they do the same thing with the Antichrist. Because look at verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. See, someone tried to kill him. Someone tried to kill him. And his deadly wound was healed. You'll notice verse 3, he was wounded to death. So he died. He was wounded all the way to death. But then what? He healed himself at the middle of verse 3. And all the world wondered after the beast. Now they worship him. They worship him. If you look at, let's see right here. Let's look at verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So he continues another three and a half years 
trying to rule over all the world. Look at verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound, so how was he assassinated? Which had the wound by a what? Sword and did live. So that's why there are some end time scholars who suggest that it could be uh, something Muslim here. So there's going to be something Muslim involved. And if you look at current events, that really seems to match up pretty well. <laughs> Where Muslims, they, would, they want to assassinate the U.S. president. And if you look at even right now, the terrorists and the Muslim extremists and etc. And not only that, their own religion themselves, they do promote and they teach that. And they've always had an antagonism where they want to assassinate and kill the U.S. government. Yep. They always want to take over. That has always been their mindset. So what is pretty interesting concerning some of the conspiracy researchers right here is that this airplane, when it was flying over, that when it crashed, when they looked at the remains over here, they looked at the remains of this plane over here. So it's not an accurate airplane, I know, okay? <laughs> Come on, have grace with me here. Have grace with me over here. <laughs> so uh, with this airplane, what they found is that in the wings and the other uh, and the and the rubbles of the airplane over here is that they found like uh, these bullet holes actually. So, which is pretty interesting. So, I don't know how much of that is true or not. But there are some images that are shown if you look up online where you looked at the rubbish and the remains of the airplane and supposedly there are some of these bullet holes or something that looked like artillery where it was being shot at the airplane. And this was hours after the, the missile. What's also very interesting is that the airplane course where it was running, it was running at the same course where the missiles were located as well, actually, coincidentally. So supposedly where this airplane was flying was similarly on the same course where the missiles were being launched. So I don't know how much of that information is true or not, but I can tell you something. The Bible shows you that there's going to be Gog and Magog, and, they will, and the Muslim nations, they will have that conflict with the Antichrist, and that is found at Revelation chapter 6 and Daniel chapter 11. There will be nations th that will not agree with the Antichrist. Nations the Antichrist has to conquer. What is the Antichrist system? We already know, the United Nations. United Nations, that's a no-brainer right there. Look at the nations who are disagreeing with the United Nations. What are they? It's generally the communist nations or the Muslim nations. See, that current event's already laid it out for you, and the Bible's prophecy is already being unfolded right in front of your eyes. So it's amazing how much of that Bible is way ahead of you. So while this is going on, these tensions with uh, America and Iran is going on, obviously the liberals and the Democrats are throwing a fit about it, right? And liberals and Democrats, all they are, as you'll always notice, is that these people, they will always try to sympathize with Islam and they will try to glorify and magnify Islam and say, oh, the poor people, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why you got that Palestinian conflict. So it is such a mess. But <laughs> in CNN, because they will always want to sully uh, Trump and his presidency and et cetera, now, I don't agree with everything he does either, but I don't like what the liberal system is doing either. I don't like them even more. But what CNN did was, which is pretty hilarious, they had this woman, uh, I may not pronounce her name right, but Masume Ebtekar, and she's supposed to be the vice president of women and family affairs in the Iranian region. They had her speak at CNN, and obviously she was talking about like how this was not good of Trump, and what he did was a terrorist of him, et cetera, which is pretty funny concerning the Muslim, yeah. the Muslim crowd that she came from. Because where she came from, in case that you didn't know, she was actually in charge of a U.S. hostage situation that happened in the Muslim region. So they kept all these uh, U.S., uh, they kept these people hostages. And in fact, Glenn, if you even doubt me, even Glenn Beck, posted the video in his news source, and you'll see a full clip, 
where she was speaking in the in front of the news reporter that we keep these hostages and then they and then they mentioned about but the hostages are not to blame for the government right and she don't care about that she mentioned that it doesn't matter they're still part of the system so if they start to go against us then we will kill these hostages etc we will do harm to these hostages and that's the person cnn invited to speak you know what that is i'll tell you what that is it's cuckoo that's cuckoo that's being a liberal if you're a liberal you're a cuckoo man if you're a democrat you're a cuckoo man it's so funny, man. Hypocritical of these people. Oh, Trump, you know, shaking hands with the North Co uh, Korean dictator, etc. Who are you to invite this kind of person? Yeah. You know what? You know what? Both parties are hypocrites on both ends. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter on both ends. It's just stupidity at its finest. Stupidity at its finest. But you know what's going on right here? What's going on is what the scriptures prophesied. The Antichrist, USA, tries to make peace with everybody, including these people. And they will do it by conquest. Hence, you got that stupid war that w went on with the Bushes. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, you know, we're doing this for peace. And then because of that, we, uh, even both parties were not happy. And I think even George Bush even regretted about what he did with, with this thing concerning about the war with this Muslim countries. But aside from that point, the point is this, the point is, is that you see current events on the way with already what the Bible prophesied. The Antichrist tries to make peace with every nation, including these people. But through words of peace, it's conquering and to conquer. Well, guess what? These nations are still going to resist the Bible shows at Daniel 11 and Revelation 6. And guess what? One of them tries to assassinate and even kills the beast is going to be a ruler of the U.S. presidency and all the world, the United Nations. So he's going to take control over everything. And then one day, uh, whether it be a Muslim or somebody else, is going to assassinate the beast, the Antichrist. And his greatest triumph is where he raised himself from the dead three days later like Jesus Christ and say, peace be unto you. I got the victory over death and hell. And then that's why some of these nations are going to side with the Antichrist even more. And then the latter three and a half years, then he conquers and persecutes the Jewish people. And then the Muslim people can carry out the Antichrist order because what is interesting is that these tribulation saints who consist of a lot of Jews, they get killed by what? Beheading. And that's according to Muslim holy writings where they said that if it be an infidel that doesn't follow their system, you chop off their head. The Bible is way ahead. Amen. Way ahead. Wild stuff. We're getting there, folks. Mm -hmm. We're getting there.